So, uh, where to begin? Uh, I work in an undisclosed research facility, roughly 10 kilometers south of the Ross Eye Shelf. A team of five other researchers and I, we were tasked with the job of retrieving ice cores from the shelf and dating the ice inside. The rest doesn't matter, as I need to get this up as soon as possible. I'm going to copy down my log of important activity that I've been recording upon my arrival up until now. My name is Mike, and I've been trapped in Antarctica for a month. March 8th, 2022. Ah, uh, so the crew and I have arrived at the undisclosed research facility. This one is much smaller than your average, but anyway. There's only a barracks, a common building, and a research wing. We each settled into our respective rooms in the barracks. It's not a luxurious room. It's got a bed, desk, closet. It's going to need a lot of work to make me feel at home for the next seven months that I'll be here. We all agreed to take the rest of the night off to get some sleep and get some work done in the morning. March 9th, 2022. We all had alarms set for seven o'clock. We've all showered and dressed to meet up in the common building and get our bearings. Simon and Todd were already inside the common building drinking coffee by the time I arrived. They've both been in this business for the last 20 years of their lives. They've been working together since, oh, around 2006. Simon is your average looking scientist. Short, white hair, glasses and very professional. Todd is a few years younger than Simon with a buzz cut and a very short temper. Todd can be very eccentric, but he and Simon seem to work well together, so I don't hold it against him. I walked with Sarah and Jeannie to the commons. Sarah's been working in Antarctica for five years, Jeannie for two years. However, they've never worked together. Sarah has long brown hair she keeps up in a ponytail, and Jeannie has had my attention since I arrived. She's a tantalising redhead, and very friendly. I know, unprofessional, but she's bloody gorgeous. I came with my boss, Kate, who I'm an intern for. She's been studying ice cores all her life. She put this crew together for this study... Uh, she's a strict brunette who only really cares for her job. She showed up in the commons shortly after I did. Kate took me on a tour of the research building while the other four talked in the commons. She showed me how each of the instruments worked and what they did. I reminded her that I was an intern, not a tourist, and that I knew what all of these were used for and what they did. Upon returning to the group, they were getting their gear on to go out into the desert. Uh, yes, Antarctica is a desert. Antarctica gets, on average, about eight inches of precipitation a year. All deserts are not blistering. Anyway, we bundled up for the 10k journey in the minus 10 degrees Celsius slash 20 degrees Fahrenheit weather. We gathered into our Ford E-Series Ice Challenger van and we were off. We surveyed the area where we would be coring for a few hours, and we returned back to the base. March 10th, 2022. Today was the first day out in the field, so this entry will be short, as I didn't really have my log out there. Nothing important to note today. Future logs will only include important updates as I don't want to be cooped up in my dorm away from everyone. March 16th, 2022. We lost Simon today. As in, we cannot find him. The small camp we set up where we'll be coring has a few tents we were all sitting in as he was drilling into the ice. 
We all heard the machine stop grinding far too soon. We opened up the tent and we saw Simon was not on the drill. We searched literally everywhere in the 200 square foot camp we set up. Uh, if you don't know, in Antarctica, all you see is white. We all wear bright orange jackets out there for this reason. There was no orange in sight, besides our own jackets. We came back to the base early today. Todd doesn't seem himself. Update. 10.30pm. After dinner at the base, we were starting to settle in for the night, when Jenny called for everyone to come into the commons. She was looking out from the front window. She was pointing out to the vast whiteness. Everything's uh, a little bit fuzzy, but the conversation went something like this. Jeannie, do you guys see that? The white thing, moving around out there. It's all white out there, Jeannie. What are you talking about? Todd said. No. It has a human shape, but it's white, Jeannie stated. Like the Ningen? Todd spouted angrily. We all know the stories of the Ningen around here. I mean, is it so impossible? There's no one else out here but us, Todd, said Jeannie. I'm not listening to any of this, continued Todd. We lost Simon today and... You're going to pull this shit? No thanks. I'm going to the bunks. Todd walked out angrily, out of the comments. Jeannie, really? The Ningen? Come on, said Sarah. And that was pretty much how that conversation went. The group started disbanding at this point. I stayed with Jeannie and watched out the window with her. I could see something. It was just... wandering around. Looking at our vehicles, right in front of the base. The inside lights barely illuminating the figure. It was... looking inside at us, and moving its hand across the vehicle in a very peculiar motion. I left Jeannie at this point, and I went back to my bunk. March 17th, 2022. Todd is refusing to leave his room today. I'm not going to fight him on this one. Sarah and Jenny are working in the research wing. Kate and I are going out to camp to pick up some more ice cores. Update. 11pm. I found Jenny setting up a camera at the window we saw the figure in last night. She said if anything moves tonight, this camera will catch it. March 18th, 2022. In the morning, Jeannie and I reviewed the camera as Sarah and Kate tried to get the research mission back on track by going to drill for some more cores. Todd was still in his room. He only came out to eat yesterday. When we approached the camera, I noticed Sarah's mouth agape. The camera was there, but what we saw was something we needed to review on the camera right away. A letter, I, had been carved into the window glass. The camera revealed nothing. No pictures, no video, it didn't catch anything. We were dumbfounded. I'm starting to feel uneasy here. March 26th, 2022. The last eight days went by with nothing new developing of the situation. Today changed that. Kate and Sarah have been working together a lot recently. Todd stays in his room all day now. Jeannie and I, we've become closer during this unsettling adventure. 
Sarah and Kate told us to go to the camp to get her research logs that she'd left down there the day prior. I think it was to get us out of the base, to get some fresh air and forget some of this stuff going on. Upon arriving at the camp, we retrieved the notes and started back to the Ice Challenger. Jeannie called my name, and I came over to where she was standing inside one of the tents. She turned to me, and she held up a bright orange jacket with an M torn out of the material. We returned to the base as fast as we could, and we showed Sarah and Kate. Kate ripped the jacket out of Jeannie's hands and threw it in the trash. Kate, what the hell is wrong with you? I asked. She said, Mike, we're not doing this right now. Forget the jacket. Forget the S and the I and the M. Now, Kate told me, rather emphatically. The S? Jeannie asked. Yeah, I said. It was carved into the Ice Challenger door, where that thing was standing. Jeannie then ran outside in the cold without her protective clothing. Damn it! We're here to do research, not mess around with superstitions, Kate shouted. Kate, why are you being so defensive over all of this? Asked Sarah. I'm responsible for Mike. He's my intern. His first mission in the field is under my guidance. How would it look for me if he came back and this was all he had to show for this trip? I'm trying to save both our asses. I don't know what's going on, but it's not my job to figure it out. And that is where the conversation ended. Jeannie came back in a few minutes later and stayed in my room with me for the night. She confided in me that she was sharing my somewhat uneasy feelings about all this. I don't like this, Mike, she said. I know I saw something out there. Why won't Kate do anything? Asked Jeannie. I've been her intern for almost four months now, Jeannie. When she has a job to do, that's all she focuses on. But this, I... I don't know. This isn't something to just put behind you. I tried to reassure her. Kate is the most experienced here. She'll do what she will to keep us safe. Okay, but how do you explain what we found? She asked. That thing has Simon in. It's toying with us. What else are we going to find with the letters carved into it? Jeannie said, shaking now. Oh, I don't know, Jeannie. Let's just try and get some sleep and calm down. March 27th, 2022. With everything that's been going on recently, Sarah's been keeping to herself now too. Today she came up to Jeannie and I and told us she was leaving. She said she couldn't stay here with Kate acting the way she was, along with Simon and the letters. She's taking the second ice challenger we haven't used yet to the Amundsen Scott South Pole Station to await an evacuation from the continent. We said our goodbyes and she was off. We didn't inform Kate until Sarah was gone. Todd has stopped replying to our request to come out of his bunk. March 28th, 2022. Jeannie and I went with Kate to the camp to collect more ice cores. Jeannie and I were in a tent going over notes, trying to stay focused on the research. Kate came in with a new core and told us to work on it. Each core we get is from further and further out on the shelf. The readings should be similar. So far they have been. Upon laying the core down next to the machine and starting the reading, Jeannie and I both had a very bad feeling. The screen was only showing a letter O. No other reading would show up from this core, nor did any other we tried. Jeannie and I both knew what was coming next. We called for Kate to come back and look at the reading. She was not happy with our joke, 
said it had gone on far enough. She got in the Ice Challenger and drove off without us. She left us in the cold, ten kilometres away from base. Jeannie and I decided to walk back to camp before it became late and got even colder. We started following the tracks back from the Ice Challenger. About five minutes into our walk, it started to snow. The snow mixed with the wind. It was covering the tracks. Something I should mention is that in Antarctica, there are very few landmarks to keep your bearings. Humans and animals do not walk in straight lines. We tend to curve ever so slightly. This is how people become lost in cornfields and such. Along with the lack of landmarks and the snow flurry we were experiencing, our fate was not looking good. And that was when we saw it. The white figure it emerged from the snow. It was tall, long arms and legs. The head was human shaped, but the eyes and mouth were that of a dolphin. Big, empty black eyes and a wide open mouth with small serrated teeth. It raised its hand and it pointed. We followed its hands with our eyes to see Kate driving the Ice Challenger back to camp. We'd strayed so far from the path, we could barely even see the deep blue vehicle in the snow. We started to run toward camp. We ran to the Ice Challenger and jumped in and told Kate to gun it back to base. Kate, however, was not in the vehicle when we got there. Jeannie and I booked it back to camp. We ran inside and we locked all the doors leading outside. We ran to Todd's room and started banging on the door to let us in. I noticed snow coming from under his door. Jeannie and I, we started slamming into the door until it finally gave way. We found Todd's body on the ground, covered in snow. A blood red N carved into his chest. March 29th, 2022. Todd's body was gone this morning. April 3rd, 2022. Jeannie and I have gotten the rest and small break we needed. We decided to get back to work. Try to put this behind us. Help is not coming. There's no point in trying. This unusual snowstorm is keeping everyone out of the air. We've decided to just continue to do our research. April 10th, 2022. Today, we were out the furthest that we'd been coring for ice. I was guiding the drill down into the ice while Jeannie was next to me. When all of a sudden, the drill dropped like it had went through the bottom of the ice. Now, the Ross Ice Shelf is several hundred metres thick. There is no way I could have gone through to the bottom. I pulled the drill up, and it was covered in blood. Jeannie and I quickly pulled the core out of the drill. We saw the flesh and the muscle that was in that drill. We knew it was Simon. The Ningen had been leading us to find this. It had somehow gotten Simon's body deep inside the ice. Jeannie and I rushed back to the base for the final time. The Ice Challenger will not start. We're stuck here. We don't know which way is which. Help is not coming. We've locked all the doors leading inside, as well as locked all corridors leading out to the common building. We have enough supplies to last a few months in here, but we don't think we will. Tonight the sun sets. 
for the winter in Antarctica.